Hello and welcome to the first video on medical physics. This is for the G485 A level syllabus um, as part of the OCR A level. So this video is going to talk about the X-ray tube. I'm going to split this section up into shorter videos because it would take too long all in one go. So the X-ray tube. Um, so let's start with some basics. Here is a diagram of the, the electromagnetic spectrum with the visible section in the middle and then going to shorter wavelengths uh, we have the ultraviolet section and then we have x-rays. So this is where x-rays fit on the spectrum which I'm sure you can remember. So the range of frequencies of, uh, of, of x-rays are around about 10 to the 17 to 10 to the 20 hertz and just to give you an idea of how that compares Visible light is approximately 10 to the 14 hertz. So we're talking about a thousand to a million times uh, higher frequency than, than um, visible light. Okay, so one of the key skills that you need to be able to do is to convert frequencies into wavelengths and figure out the range of wavelengths for x-rays. So using the equation C equals F lambda, see if you can convert these to uh, wavelengths. And pause the video while you do that. Okay, so what you should have got is um, approximately 10 to the 8, 10 to, sorry, 10 to the minus 8 to 10 to the minus 13 meters in terms of the wavelengths of x-ray. So they're very, very short wavelengths indeed. Um, because obviously they're right up at this end of the, of the spectrum just, just before gamma rays. Another thing you need to be able to do is calculate the photon energies of x-rays because obviously being electromagnetic radiation they, they can be described as photons which have an energy and if you remember from your quantum mechanics last year the energy of a photon is equal to h times Planck's sorry is equal to Planck's constant h times the frequency um, and because of this equation here it's also equal to hc divided by lambda um, and if you work out the photon energies in electron volts and also, don't forget that um, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 minus 19 joules. And when you do that, you get um, a range of energies around about a few hundred kilo electron volts. So we're talking about somewhat less than 1 m, sorry, gone off the line there, 1 MeV. Okay. So those are some little numbers about x-rays themselves. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so x-rays are produced in what we call an x-ray tube, which is a slightly complicated piece of equipment, um, which we need to examine in detail and try and figure out how it works. So this is a schematic diagram of an x-ray tube, and we're gonna move from sort of left to right and see and, and describe and talk about all the, all the parts. So on the left, up here, um, is this black line is, is a piece of wire, that's all it is, just a piece of wire, and it's connected to an alternating voltage, a very low voltage, six, six volts or so, and what that does is it pushes a current, an alternating current, through this wire. Now, on this end of the wire over here, what we have is a filament, just in the same way as you might find a filament in the light bulb. Um, and filaments get very hot. Okay, so what we've got over here is a glowing wire, um, which is the cathode of, of the piece of equipment. But we'll, we'll explain why that is in a minute. Now, what happens here is that electrons are released from the wire, and they're released by a, a process called thermionic emission. Thermionic emission. Therm, because it's to do with heat. Onic, because it's to do with electrons. Emission, because the electrons are given out. And I think it's actually worth, time, worth spending a bit of time looking at thermionic emission and how it happens. So imagine this is the surface of a, of a, of a wire. And you've got the atoms of the, of the wire, you know, copper or whatever they are, on the surface in their sort of lattice, which I haven't drawn very well. <laughs> In amongst those, you've got the electrons which carry the current, okay? Which are obviously free electrons, free to move around the wire. 
Uh, and in essence, what happens to these electrons is um, as the wire heats up, the electrons, because of the current, the electrons are given lots of kinetic energy and they start zooming around all over the place. The atoms themselves that are fixed in place start vibrating much more than they did before and that's what makes the wire hot. And effectively, the thing that happens with the electrons is that some of them are given enough kinetic energy to actually just escape the surface like that. They just jump out of the surface of the wire only by, you know, a few nanometers probably. But it's enough to get them out of that electrostatic potential well that, that they find themselves in normally. Now, in most situations, the electrons would just drop back into the wire um, because they find themselves attracted to it because of the effectively you've made this positively charged by releasing the electrons and then they jump back in. But let's say, for example, that instead of that, you put a massive, large, positive voltage over here somewhere. All right. Now, when the electrons are released from the wire, they're going to say, wow, look at that positive voltage over there. I'm heading off that way, boys. And off they go across the gap, accelerating all the way towards the voltage. And that's the process that's called thermionic emission, which is used in X-ray tubes and elsewhere in various other devices in physics, some of which you've already seen. For example, a television, an old-fashioned CRT-based television. Okay, so that's what's happening there. All right, so the electrons get emitted from that wire, and then they zoom across the gap here. Now this gap is actually evacuated, all right? So we're talking about, sorry, that says vacuum there, believe it or not. That's a vacuum, so there's, there's no air in here. If there was air in here, of course, the electrons would hit the air molecules on their way across and lose lots of kinetic energy, and probably most of them wouldn't make it at all. So we take all the air out in order to facilitate their passage across this little gap. Okay, so this blue line represents the electron beam. When it gets to the other side, it impacts upon this uh, piece of metal here, this target. All right, now this is what we call, uh, this is, it's not actually labeled on here, but this is called the anode. And the anode is made of tungsten. It's a target made of tungsten. And the when the electrons hit it, they actually penetrate into the, the tungsten. And by interacting with the atoms within the tungsten, X-rays are produced. And those are the X-rays that the machine uses. So the electrons strike the target which is made of tungsten um, and then they're accelerated across here as we said because there's a very large potential difference between the cathode which is this end of the apparatus at zero volts and a very large positive voltage a hundred thousand volts or thereabouts at the anode okay and that's why they're accelerated across here uh, gaining lots of kinetic energy so they strike the tungsten and they interact with atoms in the tungsten, which is described in a separate video, and give off x-rays. <clears throat> now that would make the tungsten very, very hot in this position, because you'd have a stream of uncountable numbers of, of electrons hitting this part of the tungsten target. And the way it's kept cool is to rotate this at very high speed. So it's connected to a very large uh, high torque electric motor, which rotates this thing rapidly. And as it rotates, it, it prevents the electrons hitting one part of the tungsten and enables them to effectively be spread out over the entire area of, of the tungsten target. And that is one of the ways in which it is kept cool. It's also sometimes oil cooled as well in order to keep it, um, keep it reasonably cool. Okay, so in summary then, we've got thermionic emission, electrons being evaporated or emitted from the surface of this wire and accelerated across this evacuated gap by this very large positive potential difference here. When they get to the other side, they hit this tungsten target, which is the anode because it's positive, um, interact with the atoms in the tungsten, and x-rays are given off. Okay, and in order to keep it cool, it's rotated at very high speed by this big electric motor at the back. All right, so that's the x-ray tube.